G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here and today I want to talk about how you stabilize GoPro footage. You know those moments when you realize, oh no, I should have put HyperSmooth on? This is the GoPro 10 which has HyperSmooth, which is insane. You can jump off a cliff and tumble down a rock face, hold this and it'll come out smooth. But sometimes you forget it or sometimes you have an older GoPro and therefore when you're walking or doing something like this, the footage is a bit shaky and it's frustrating and you're like, it should be better. I know it can be better. Well, today I'm gonna to solve that problem. And to do that, we're gonna use Video Proc Converter. And so, would you come with me as I stick this footage into Video Proc Converter? And we see if it can actually stabilize the footage, not crop in too hard and make it silky smooth. Yeah? Sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? If you'd like to come with me, please subscribe, like this video, and we'll get into it. Thanks for chuffing along with me today. We're looking at the free software called Video Proc Converter. It's free up to five minutes of footage. So you can edit and stabilize and do a whole host of things with five minutes of footage. If you want to do more than that, you have to go for the paid version. But today we're looking at the free version. We have the clip that you just saw that was deliberately shaky and we are going to run it through Video Proc Converter to see if Video Proc Converter can in fact improve the shakiness of it. And I'll talk you through how you do it and we'll look at the results and you can see for yourself if it's something that you'd like to do. So first of all, you open up the program after the free download from this page, and then what comes up is Video Proc Converter. We then go to video because that's what we're dealing with today, and we get this little window. Now into this window, we then drag our file that we're going to be using. And today we are going to be using this file, MOV file that we just did. So we drag that in, close that down, and we have our file there. Now what we, that's me, a little bit of a, yeah. And then what we're going to do is go down to the toolbox. So you have popular video device music and toolbox right down the bottom. We're going to hit toolbox. That's going to bring up these options. From these options, we're going to choose D shake. And D shake then gives us a host of different options. You double click on that. I'm using a Mac in case you're wondering. So it brings us to our video stabilization. It automatically previews. Now, here's one of the challenges I found. Let me say straight up. First of all, you have to have your video on the same hard drive as the program that you're using. Use it on your direct a hard drive that's on your computer. If you use an external hard drive, it's it's too much lag. Then the other problem is if you're using a, a large file, you don't get the preview. So watch this. This is the preview, and you can see it, it lags a lot. So oh, there we go. Stopped it. It's gonna keep going. And what I want to talk to you through is these four options on the side. The first option is shakiness. And so basically it's how shaky it is. Now, you know, sometimes when you're trying to, you grab your SLR, your DSLR, and you're trying to take some video footage and you're like this, and you look at it later on, it's a little bit choppy. The shakiness isn't like this, right? So what you saw was an interesting shake on the video. It was shaky, but not like I'm going over some corrugated uh, dirt. And so for shakiness, I would pitch it around around 8.7, something like that, for the video that you've just seen. Now, what you need to know is the further to the right these scales go, the better quality result you get, but the longer it takes to process it. We'll talk about processing in just a minute. So shakiness, I would go somewhere around, well, let's put it on 9. Uh, accuracy. Accuracy, the higher the value is, the more accurate the match will be, but the slower the processing will become and vice versa. So we want it as accurate as possible. And I'm going to bump that right up to 15. And let's talk about step size. Step size is the higher the value is, the bigger the range of searching identified macro blocks would be. So the high valuable is suitable suitable for severely jittering frames. And so a jittering frame is really when it goes and you really can't make out what it says. Um, so mine didn't have big jittering frames. I'm not going to put that all the way up, but I will put it considerably up because there were some times when I deliberately kind of dropped uh, the camera as we were talking. And then mini contrast. Mini contrast is the smaller the threshold is, the higher the output quality will be. 
bigger value will lead to faster processing, yet poorer quality. It will not process darker blocks below the set threshold. So basically what happens is the program processes where uh, uh, the, the blocks of image and data above what you set. And so you could set it right down the bottom and you will get as quality as you can. I'm shooting in 4K um, and for this particular experiment I don't mind losing a little bit of quality so I'm going to put it a bit higher uh, than 4K and you can also then if you look down here it says start and end time and you can choose the, the clips a minute nine you can say I actually only want to stabilize this particular section of the video which is really handy if most of it's smooth you can then identify where it is the challenge you have as you would have seen and look you can you can use these sliders to do this and so you can select which bits you want to do but I am going to do with it all once I go done it then comes back to our original screen and then what I need to do is go uh, make sure my output folder is where I want. I'm going to put it to the desktop. It's just the easiest. It outputs to MOV file uh, so you might want to take that into consideration and then you go up here to your options and you want to make sure that you're using all of the capacity of the computer and to do that you actually need to download something else. Now here's what happens if you download it. You go to this page and for free you can download something that gives the program the ability to use the full hardware acceleration of your computer. Here's what's interesting. I didn't use this the first time and the image that I'm about to process at the settings I'm about to process of a one minute nine seconds took three and a half hours to process. So you want to get that acceleration this is the kind of program you use when you've taken something and you have just a really you have a really great shot and you're like all right what I want to do with this now is I just want to make it so smooth so here's what we're going to do I am going to uh, stabilize this footage I'm going to put it next to my previous footage and then I'm actually going to stabilize the Final Cut Pro and put the Final Cut Pro stabilized next to that and you'll be able to see for yourself uh, what you make of it. So without wasting all your time, I've already done it and we're going to go straight to the samples of non-stabilized and stabilized. Please enjoy. Now as you can see the stabilized is on the left, the unstabilized is on the right and the right is jumping around a fair bit. Don't worry about the cut in my head, that's part of what the program does to be able to compensate for the jitteriness and the shakiness. But if you'll notice on the left side, that's quite smooth. It's quite good. And on the right hand side, there's a fair bit of movement. And you can see just above my head that tree, the tree on the left hand side is quite stable and the tree on the right hand side is jumping around a fair bit. So this gives a really good sample about what this program can do. And I didn't push it to its full limits or use the hardware accelerator, which you could do and you would get better, better results. You know what I really like? I really like the fact that it doesn't crop in. So most stabilizing you crop in on an image and you lose the external things. But this somehow, with some wizardry, manages to hold it all really um, clear and, and in focus and actually not too bit. There's a little bit of, of distortion. Look at these trees. And yes, it's not as smooth as you'd like it to be, but keep in mind, I was shaking that camera around a fair bit. Here's what we're gonna do now, is I am gonna stabilize both. So I'm gonna give you the Final Cut Pro stabilization on top of Video Prop Converter stabilization. So the one on the left has been stabilized by Video Prop Converter and then stabilized by Final Cut Pro. And the other one on the right is not stabilized at all. Gosh, look at that. That looks really good, except here's the interesting part. You see how much it's cropped in on Final Cut Pro? And that's what I was talking about before. So if you stabilize, often what happens is it crops in. And what I love about Video Prop Converter is actually you can, you can actually stabilize without losing any of your image quality. And so what I'd like to do now is I am going to add in a fully stabilized, cranked to the max on all of the slides, a stabilized copy of the video, and we're gonna see how good it does, okay? So here we go.
it's going to take me like half a day to do it but for you two seconds if you appreciate this give me a thumbs up now that didn't take very long at all did it well not for you that actually took an hour and a half to uh, stabilize on the maximum settings possible with the hardware accelerator built in so I would strongly suggest you get that for free. You follow the link uh, that is in the middle of the program. You download that. You then replace your software with that new piece of software and you use that. And it's much, much quicker. And let's have a look. So again, we've cut it in half. Uh, and look, the right-hand side of the screen is shaking about like a leaf. And the left-hand side is really actually quite good. And it hasn't cropped. It hasn't cropped. What it's done is it's sort of warped and stretched and... Uh, compensated on the left hand side let's just make sure the audio is feeling good It'll come out smooth but sometimes you forget it or sometimes you have an older GoPro and therefore when you walk really quite impressive so you do have a funny bit of like wobble in the far reaches this is shot on a GoPro so it's super wide so if you cropped in a little bit or you put a de warp on it um, it would actually come up really good so finally what I'd like to do is put the same part of the clip of the unstabilized, the first stabilized, and then the developed stabilized next to each other. And you'll be able to judge for yourself. Thanks so much for watching Video Proc Converter. Thank you so much for the opportunity to use this software and display it. I hope it's been beneficial for you all. It's such a great free option. Uh, I would then take this, the product of this, and then put it into the project that I'm using. Um, and you could use Video Proc Vlogger to do that. It's another free thing, and there'll be a video at the end of this, which gives you a little bit of a taste for that program. Uh, and then you could actually use. Uh, that uh, stabilized footage and stabilize it a little further it might crop in a touch and you get some really really tasty video as a result of that thanks so much for watching if you'd like to join the channel you can do that down below if you'd like to give me a thumbs up be stoked say good day in the comments ask any questions that you have and I hope you have well it's right now at the moment of, of filming it's Christmas Eve I know it's not when you watch this but it is now so Merry Christmas everybody mm -hmm.